Hi, welcome to the Lisa Saunders Show. I'm Lisa Saunders, living here in Mystic, Connecticut, and I have some very cool guests on my show today. In fact, this is why I'm wearing this shirt with anchors on it. <laughs> so who are you? My name is John Edgington, and I'm captain of the 110-foot schooner Mystic Whaler, sailing from New London, Connecticut. But we're actually neighbors. At least our P.O. boxes are neighbors, right? Yes. <laughs> Great to be part of this community. <laughs> And uh, who did you bring with you? This is my lovely wife, Captain Pat Beck. Now, this is pretty interesting. You're both captains, and you run Mystic Whalers, not just your ship, it's your business. It's so our life. It, yeah. it, it is your life. It is our life. And in fact, I mean, you live on it. Do you live on it year round? Year round. Year round. Year and round. so right now, I mean, uh, so you live at Mystic Seaport and when you're not out sailing. Is that yes. how it works? Yes, and in the summertime, all of our cruises leave from New London. From city, New London, city, Connecticut. Historic City Pier in New London. Well, it is a yeah. pretty exciting place to um, leave from because whenever I've come down the Thames River and I see your ship, I always thought, oh, those, that looks so cool. I feel like I'm in a time warp or something when I look at it next to the big uh, cargo. I don't know. What, what are those things? that Car ferries and all kinds yeah. of... <clears throat> Big things are happening. Cargo ships coming into State Pier as well. Yes, yeah. and then I see your ship sailing off into the sunset. And I always thought, oh, I, if I could only meet those people. And then I actually met you <laughs> at an art opening. I, Here we are. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so I had to invite you on my show because I want to know what you do and why you do it. And how can any one of us come aboard? Like, I've never even been on your ship. And you promised me dinner on your ship. Is that really true? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So tell me about your ship, what you do for a business. We have fun. <laughs> we take people sailing on cruises ranging from three-hour lobster dinner cruises and lunch cruises to uh, two, three, and five-day overnight cruises, cruising in the waters of southern New England and stopping someplace pretty each evening. Really? And, uh, uh, yeah. So each evening and then you sleep and then do people get off or are you just... They're welcome to. They're they're well, like. So there's time enough for them yes. to get off and yes, wander around. Like what kind of places do you get, get off? We often get to Block Island. Oh, um, and Rhode Island. That's Block yes, Island, Rhode Bl Island. Block mm -hmm. Island, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. Newport, Rhode Island, Jamestown, oh. Rhode Island. Uh, in the other direction, we often visit Shelter Island, New York, uh, and its neighbors, Sag Harbor, Greenport, Three Mile Harbor. Oh, I've heard uh, of all those, and I've never, well, I've been to Newport, and, but I've never been to some of those others you mentioned. They're beautiful places, and it's easy to overlook, since we have Route 95 running right by us here, and Amtrak's uh, train service, it's easy to forget that this whole area was initially explored by Europeans by water, and settled by water. And water is the transportation link. And uh, so you get some very historic towns, um, particularly Mystic, New London, Stonington, Connecticut. Uh, there's just a great deal of history along the waterfront. And it's all beautiful. Wow. Mm. Now, do you like history? I do, yes. The more I learn about an area we're in, the more interesting it becomes to me. Well, your ship itself is, I don't know how old it is. How old is your ship? It is 52 years old this year, launched in 1967. Well, and that's kind of old for a wooden ship, right? I mean, you had a lot of work to do to get it up and ready, right? And or? the work goes on constantly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so what is, uh, what is a, it's a schooner, right? Yep. In order, uh, what is a schooner? My husband asked me, and it's embarrassing because I... Yeah. <laughs> should know this, but what is a schooner? A uh, schooner is a sailing vessel with at least two masts, and the one in back is higher than the one in front. It can have any number of masts, but it needs to be at least two masts. And why did um, people of old want a schooner versus a bark, or, you know, what's the, who would use them, fishermen? or Fishermen who? and cargo carriers. Schooners had the ability to sail into the wind, which square rig vessels could not do, so they the schooners were the tractor trailers of commerce in New oh, England before okay. we had the railroads, before we had good roads. And uh, so most commerce traveled coastwise by uh, schooners. The Mystic Whaler is typical of a late 19th century coasting cargo schooner. Okay, so a fisher, people that carry fish would want it because they have, t they have to be able to get somewhere because of yes. time. Is that why the 
that's a particular ship they would want? Yes. If you're sailing across oceans, you can follow the trade winds and sail downwind the whole way. And for that uh, use, square rig vessels are superior. But when you have to sail upwind, as you would 50% of the time along the coast, a uh, schooner was uh, an advantage because it could uh, sail upwind. Okay, that's this is all interesting mm. to know the differences. Um, now, I think this is kind of interesting that you're both captains of this ship. So who yells at who? Or who's the boss when you're sailing? <laughs> or how does that work? I, I give the answers. Captain Pat gives the right answers. <laughs> <laughs> that's not always true. That's a, mm. You know, it's a partnership. It, you know, it really is a partnership. And... You know, John takes care of things, I take care of things. Sometimes we take care of the same things, but we're both there working together to make sure that everybody's happy, the ship's ready to go all the time, um, and, and for us also to have a good time. So people often ask us, how do you work? How do you live together 24 hours a day, seven days a week? I could never do that. And I say, well, maybe you're married to the wrong person because we do it, we do it well, um, and we have a good time, you know, so it, 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 it works for us. Well, do you have some things that one of you specializes in or does more of, like is he more at the helm or vice versa? Yeah, he really, you know, he runs the overall operation of the boat um, is what he does along with everything else, you know, and then I'm um, just making sure that everything else is going along as smoothly as possible. You know, that the, that the crew is trained, that the passengers are happy, that oh, the boat is crew. clean. Oh, you have crew, okay, so how many yeah, crew Yeah, so we have, have we have crew, we usually have six crew plus us. Oh. Um, and that allows some crew to take days off. So when they first arrive, um, there's training of the crew that needs to go on. Most of them have never sailed on a tall ship before. So this is a first experience for them. And, um, you know, their, their heart is in it and they're Can easy to train. Can people apply to be crew? Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so what do they do? Go to your yeah. website? Yeah, then go to our website. Okay. Yep, yep. There's a link on our website to apply for um, employment, mysticwhalercruises.com. Okay. Um, so they can go there. There's a little form that they can fill out. Um, or they can e just email us some information and we'll take it from there. But we're always looking for crew, uh, looking for cooks. Oh, um, oh cooks. Yeah, cooks. Okay, yeah, so do you cooks. have to be a sailor or can you just be a cook only? You can just be a cook. You can just be a mom that knows how to cook or a dad that just knows how so to cook. So you don't cook, necessarily you know? Know, have to know how to do other things like no, tie no, knots? No, <laughs> no. Some of the cooks, wow. you know, like the sailing as aspect of it and help us out with that. And other ones, you know, their domain is the galley and that's where they tend to stay. So. You know, it varies, but oh, it, you know, varies with personality. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and the crew, uh, the crew that we get, like I said, they're they usually have not sailed before. Mm -hmm. um, this is they're looking for an experience, and um, they come to us all gung ho. And at the end of the season, they are sailors, you know. Wow. And, and they, um, you know, they learn to work together and live together and do what needs to be done. Um, they also become teachers when we have uh, sail training. Um, students on board. Now, how so, is a student, if a student doesn't live in our area, can they come and how does that work? Yeah, so we take, um, we take school groups, mm -hmm. um, we take uh, youth groups, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, anything like that. Um, and they'll come on and go sailing with us for maybe just a day, sometimes three or four days. Mm -hmm. um, so our crew are training those youths um, how to sail the ship. Now, I guess you would never hire me because you already know I've abandoned ship when I was a crew. That's okay. I, I think everybody deserves a second chance. And we're, I'm just going to be so tickled to learn to teach you how to sail this boat. Yeah. Didn't that happen to uh, the author of Moby Dick? I think, well, he did. He, he, he couldn't stand whaling, you know, so he got off. And, but then he was allowed to join another whaling. Tesla ended up writing mm -hmm. Moby Dick. Yeah, that's so. a whole nother ball game right there. We're not going for whales. <laughs> yeah. So you just so what's the longest trip? Five days. Five days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, your kind husband said you're very tidy and keep a clean ship. Is it? Is that what? What is this Bristol fashion or whatever? What's that word that I hear people say about? I don't know. Everything is ship shape. And ship shape. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ship so shape. do you yep. yell like? No. Like ship shape or no? No, no I don't yell. No. <laughs> That doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. No. And no. 
<laughs> but because we're having overnight guests, you know, um, the cabins have to be immaculate um, for them. We're serving food, so the galley has to be immaculate. Um, and it just um, is the best way to, to now, run the boat. How many beds are there? How many guests we can have? We can sleep 28 guests. Yep. 28 yeah, guests? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. if, uh, if we take school groups, we can add a couple on there. As long as they're um, okay. Yeah, but 28 guests, yep, we have um, 14 cabins. Some of them are double beds. Some of them have their own head and shower, bathroom and shower uh -huh. in their cabins. Yeah. So that's on an overnight um, during the day on our um, day sales, lobster dinner sales, or Sunday brunch sales, um, we can take 52 people. And so this is where somebody really has to be a good cook, because they're the ones cooking the lobster? Or are you getting it steamed somewhere else? Actually, actually, Captain John cooks the lobster. You're kidding! You do that too? <laughs> yeah, we, steam, we have a stainless steel steam box that we put on the grill, and we steam the lobsters right on deck while we're sailing. Oh my mm. gosh, that is so mm -hmm. exciting. I really hope, I want to get a ride someday. <laughs> and you both have great tan, so it must be from years of being on this ship. How's, do you have to have skin cancer checks? Or you guys oh, yeah, okay? we oh, yeah. do that. And sunscreen every single day, many applications. Did you, do you get seasick anymore? I have not yet. Not, not think, yet. Okay. No. What do you do if your passengers are seasick? Is there any advice you give to people? Yes. Yes. We, uh, <coughs> you know, we try to put them in the middle of the ship, mm -hmm. which is that's where the least motion is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe give them some ginger ale, maybe some crackers, little ginger if we have it. Mm -hmm. um, but the advice that we give to most people coming on, because we get asked that question a lot, mm -hmm. what if I get seasick? Um, prepare for that. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you tend to get car sick or seasick, take some medication before you come, mm -hmm. um, and that's the best way to do deal with buckets that. And, the seasickness is unusual on board yeah, because it really is. We're in the hospitality trade. We want to give people a pleasant experience. If somebody's getting seasick, I'm probably doing something wrong because there's no place we have to go, no waters we have to sail in. And uh, for instance, if it's a nice chance to go out to Block Island, we'll sail out to Block Island, an overnight trip. But Block Island is in exposed waters. If it's rough out there, we're not going. We'll go the other direction into Shelter Island Sound, Gardner's Bay, very protected waters. Okay, Above so all, we know, want to so. keep the ride comfortable. And you want to keep mm. everybody alive. And Absolutely. Happy. And happy. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's the name of the game is to keep them happy. Keep them yeah. relaxed, keep them happy, so everybody has a good time. Yeah. yeah. And you must have a good time because you've been doing it for how long? <laughs> it's been our business for 25 years. My schooner career started in Gosh, 1976. And you were 19, yeah, yeah. right, when you started. How did you even get started in this? When I was 12 years old, I had the opportunity to help with a crew of kids restoring an old life-saving station on Whitehead Island. Which and is where? In, where? I'm sorry, uh, off the coast of Maine. Okay. And one day, it was foggy, and I heard a commotion out on the water, and I didn't know what it was. I didn't hear any engine running. And there was a break in the fog, and this magnificent three-masted schooner came sailing into the clear patch there. And I didn't know if I was seeing an apparition. I, I couldn't believe it. And I thought, I've got to get on that ship someday. And seven years later, I applied for a job on that ship, and I got hired as an ignorant deckhand. And ah. The rest was a failure to get a career. <laughs> <laughs> Now, did you get yelled at? I mean, is that, do captains, I mean, you always think of captains yelling at, at the crew. I mean, because you have to yell. I mean, you have to be heard, right? I mean, and. We are, I believe we are all in equal parts, a product of our upbringing and a reaction to our upbringing. And in one way, I'm a reaction that I was, the first ship I was on, we were yelled at constantly. Mm -hmm. On the Mystic Whaler, the only time I yell is during a film shoot and the crew know not to follow my orders because it, we it's all hand signals hmm film I, shoot I, what do you mean like a film shoot um do you have movies or filmmakers coming we've on done board? various yeah oh, really? film shoots on board and they'll like ask what? they'll ask me to shout some nautical commands oh. <laughs> we did uh oh, we've done various uh evening magazine shows we did a show for the weather channel on Hurricane mm -hmm. Mitch, um, 
and it was perfectly flat when they filmed it, of course. But uh, I think yelling is a sign of loss of control. Right. And uh, well, like I said, but I, I also meant yelling because you have to be heard over it because you're a big ship. And when the wind is blowing hard, yeah, hard you cannot to... trust the spoken word to be heard. When the wind is blowing 30 knots, the words go and no sound identical. Okay, so, so, so give me, so what are some commands that you might state? What is that? Sheet out the jib. Sheet out the jib? Yep. And yep. what does that Trim mean? Trim in the foresail. Oh, it's so just you... sail adjustments. Oh my gosh, yeah. so people have to know what those mean when yep. you say that? We're tacking, <laughs> we're jibing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. So how, how do they learn what those terms mean? Do you have a little guide or is it? No, just... we just tell them. <laughs> we just this explain is what it this to means them. And yeah. this is what that means. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's, there's a hand signal for everything. A lot of times while we're out sailing, you know, there's lobster pots out there and you don't want to run over one of those. So this is lobster pot. Oh, uh, okay. Little lobster claws. Did you make that yeah, up, these yeah. little symbols or, or signs or did, is that kind of standard? I don't know the answer to that I don't know the question. answer either. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> but it I seems think, to work. I think we, we made them up. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, crew come from other boats and and know different hand signals. Okay. So we have to kind of retrain them to our hand signals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, it it all makes sense to them. You know, of course, this this looks like a lobster, so right. they know what that means, you know, and they... So you have to worry about lobster pots. Mm -hmm. You have to worry about if somebody's diving, like scuba diving, right? Because mm -hmm. there's another signal they put on mm -hmm. the boat if they're diving. And a dive flag. Yes. yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what else mm -hmm. do you have to... Like, what are your concerns? I, I mean, are you more worried about wind or fog? I mean, is there, you know... What do you? What are your concerns? I, like, I would say our most concern is other boats. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know because there are so many boats out there. Um, some of them are not trained to run these boats. Um, weekends especially. <clears throat> you oh, know I, yeah. so the boat traffic out there is such a concern because there's so many boats behind you on the side coming across. You know passing your bow. Um, you have to look out for those other boats. Do you have a motor as well as sail? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so if there's no wind, you can yep. get around. Or if you need yes. full control, because I, isn't yeah. it true that uh, sailing vessels have right of way? Not yeah. always. <laughs> Are they supposed That's to? A, no, we do not. We do not have right of way over a submarine. Oh, well, and that's yeah. right. You're going up and down the things. That's right. Submarines. Yeah. That's pretty we cool. We see a lot of submarines. Yes, it is very yeah. cool. Every time is very cool. Also, yes. wow. there's a tremendous amount of ferry traffic. Uh, we have the two ferries running to Fisher's Island. We have the Block Island Ferry. There are nine ferries running between New London and Orient Point. Although we may have the right of way over those ferries, in fact, they're on a tighter schedule than we are, and I will make every effort to stay out of their way. Um, because, as I say, there's nowhere we have to be. Right. And, that's what's uh, not. That's a. That's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. That you're not under these time constraints. Well, that's very exciting. So do, you must love the Thames River then, because there's so much going on. And there people, is. There's a yeah. lot to see on. People the Thames must River. love being on your ship, because yeah. not only do they feel special that they're in this tall mm -hmm. ship, but they're seeing a lot of action and going by all kinds of forts mm -hmm. and yeah. The scenery's always changing. Forts, yeah. lighthouses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, okay, so do you have sing shanty songs or do you we do. Even <laughs> though, or what do you? How do you know what to sing? Or are you actually a singer? I mean, I know you're a writer because I mean, oh. you say you you made a face, but you you wrote excellent bios. For you well, thank your you. Wife. Um, no, people prefer that I don't sing, but we have shanty men often who, oh, who do sail you? with us. Yes. Uh huh. Um, Jeff Kaufman and Don Sinetti, Dave Littlefield, all from. Mystic Seaport Museum, right. uh, where they're shantymen. We often have sea music on board. Oh, that is fun. So to give it the old-fashioned yeah. air of things, yeah. that sounds fun. Yeah. What kind of food, other than lobster? I know you serve lobster, but what other things do people eat? Um, we also grill chicken. That's our um, okay. our lunch and part of our luncheon menu. Grilled um, food. I grilled, love that yeah, idea. Of yeah, grilled everything. Food. So I think we use the grill every day. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So it's you know it's grilled chicken, nice fresh side salads, uh, whatever's in season. We use we always use fresh fruits and vegetables. Always clam chowder. Clam chowder gets served uh, yeah. with every yeah. meal. If yeah. I may say so. Yeah. Well, I think Mystic Whaler is famous for its clam yeah. chowder, and it's Captain Pat's recipe. 
Oh, yeah, what is it? Yeah. Well, yeah, it really it started as my grandmother's recipe. Oh. Um, and of course, you know, grandmothers don't write anything down. Mm -hmm. And so after she passed away and my grandfather came and lived with me, um, that was, you know, I said, what can I make you? And one day he said, your grandmother's clam chowder. He was a clammer, so we always had fresh clams. So after several, several tries, um, he finally put his stamp of approval on this recipe. What, what do you so, call this recipe? Clam, Delaware clam chowder. Do you post it anywhere? <laughs> like, is it on your website? Oh, no, or? but when, it, when people are on the boat and ask me for the recipe, I tell them what's in it. You oh, know, okay. because That's I'm, a, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm making it for, you know, for 50 people. So, wow. you know, they're going to make it for four. So I said, well, this is what I do. And then, you know, you got to, you have to figure out what your proportions are. But now I, in the winter, even in the winter months, you have people on board, right? You have training. And yes, last week. Week we had students from the Proctor Academy. Okay. Um, so they were with us. They they um, slept like on our boat. Like, yep. Okay. Yep. So they slept on our boat, and then they did maintenance for us um, be, before lunchtime. They did a lot of sanding. They took every, every one of our blocks this year. So you have to dismantle them and clean them up, what, grease uh, what, them. What are you talking about? So a block is um, so it's a block and tackle that lines run through for okay. mechanical advantage. We have 74 on the boat. Wow. So yeah, so they took care of all the blocks, which was awesome. Um, and then they spent the rest of the afternoon on the grounds of Mystic Seaport. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll have um, students from the Harbor School come in. Harbor School is on Governor's Island um, mm -hmm. in New York. Um, they'll come in and help us uprig the boat, which means putting it all back together to go sailing again. So, so during the off season, um, yeah, we we um, we enjoy having these students on the boat. What's the most rewarding to you about your business? Is I think you said teaching the students. Is that right, or do you have other things? Yeah, that are I, you know that that's one of my favorite things is when we have um, students on board that we take them sailing. Um, you know, they get on the board and they look at that rig and think, oh my gosh, it's so complicated. You know, and in a day, we have taught them that they can sail that boat, you know, and their whole manner changes. You know, they take ownership of that boat and, you know, figure out what teamwork really is about. And uh, it's, it's wonderful having the kids Now, Mystic on. was listed as one of the top 100 adventure downs in I think it was National Geographic magazine. Um, and that you know, encompasses also what you're doing mm -hmm. and why, if somebody wanted to come specifically to be on your ship, should they go to your website? And why do you think why do people want to come here? What makes it so adventurous around here? Our area is so beautiful and those of us who live here take it for granted. I think well, you know, we often forget that we live someplace that people come to vacation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could begin to mention the sites, there are so many nearby, but of course, Mystic Seaport Museum, the Aquarium, the Custom House Museum, um, the Subforce Museum, uh, where the Nautilus is, Ocean Beach Park, um, our lighthouses, New London Harbor Light. Yeah, Light, there's so a lot forth. of lighthouses mm -hmm. for people who are fans of those. So how many, do you see a lot of lighthouses when you're out on your ship? Yes, on any given short cruise, a three-hour cruise, we'll see about four or five lighthouses. Really? On, a three -hour on an overnight trip, we're likely to see a dozen lighthouses. Wow. Yeah. Now, does anybody live in lighthouses anymore, or is that all the Coast Guard runs it and they blink on and off by themselves? Or how does They that are work? automated. Uh, uh -huh. There's actually only one manned island lighthouse left in the country right mm -hmm. now, and that's Boston Lighthouse, mm -hmm. which was the first lighthouse uh, established in the in the continent of the United mm -hmm. States and that's only manned for historical sentimental purposes mm -hmm. otherwise they are automated there are manned mainland stations um, but uh, only one manned island station mm -hmm. so you you depend on these <coughs> right or that's, the fog yes. these mm -hmm. lighthouses mm -hmm. um, yes. and you know where you are because don't they blink differently or how does that work and they have uh, sound signaling devices as well Let's see, what else should we talk about? What else do you want to share about this life? Because it's a very different life. Most of us live, you know, in a stable environment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ours is stable. <laughs> I know, but you know what I mean? Like, we don't sway at all depending on the weather. But your, your lives are constantly moving a little bit, right? Well, 
you know, I guess it is, but because we're there all the time, we don't always feel it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel it sometimes when I'm on land, and a lot of people will tell you that once they've been on the boat for a while and they get on land, they'll they'll keep rocking for a while. Right. Yeah. It's just something that happens to your body as you're getting used to it, and you know, our bodies are used to moving, so it's you know, it just comes natural. So yeah. what's it like to live on there in the winter? Oh, are you it's freezing. No, everybody says everybody thinks that we're cold, but we're <laughs> not cold. You know, we have um, we have a reinforced plastic cover that's over the entire boat. Um, we have clear windows on the water side, so we can look out on the Mystic River. Oh, nice! But we get all that solar heat, so it's like living in a greenhouse. What do you mean solar heat? Oh, oh because, because it's the clear plastic. Yeah. Oh, okay. On sunny days, you know, when it's 30 degrees outside, we're underneath of that plastic where the sun is beating down. And it's, you know, we're working in t-shirts, so it's nice and warm. Yeah. Now so who, it, it's good. Do you ever lift it out? And who's scraping the barnacles? Aren't you supposed to <laughs> scrape barnacles? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, every two years, we get hauled out. Okay. Every, and that's a Coast Guard regulation oh, be, okay. because we are um, a Coast Guard certified boat. Um, and the yard is the one that cleans the bottom. They usually use so a, that she, a pressure washer. You don't make each other do it? No, okay. no. Do. I would do it if we have to, but um, yes. But the yard does all of that depending on where we are hauled out. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're, you know, so the boat gets um, the bottom cleaned, fresh paint put on the bottom, and any any other maintenance that needs to be done while you're out of the water gets done then. And it's only every two years. Okay. So what if the crew is disobedient, is there any keel hauling involved? Or? No. no. Nobody gets <laughs> keel hauled. Well, we no. only have two minutes left. So remind everybody how what you can, what they can do. Well, they can go to our website, mysticwhalercruises.com, um, and all the information is there about our day sales, lobster dinner sales, Sunday brunch sales. We do. We also do a Thursday wine and cheese cruise. Oh. Bring your wine, we give you the cheese and crackers. Ah, so you can yeah. drink whatever you want. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, or they can sign up for our overnight cruises. If they want information about our educational sail training cruises that we do, um, they can go to our website, send us an email, and we'll get right back in touch with them. Well, thank you so much for coming on my show, and I can't believe I got to meet you guys and let everyone know about you. So. We thank you. We yeah. You are welcome. Yeah. Take care. Thank See you around. I want, I want to dinner. come. We're I will have, have dinner. dinner. We'll have dinner. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the Lisa Saunders Show, and I'll see you all next week.